Elections. They're fun, aren't they? Well, maybe for some more than others. You see, for me, an innocent bystander, I get to watch every few years as at least two angry groups of people yell at each other for months. What is not to like? But as these last few election cycles have made critically clear, there are two values of fundamental importance, and we all agree on these values, but they're of fundamental importance in any election cycle. On the one hand is ease of access. The citizenry should be able to cast their vote and have their say, and there should not be any excessively difficult objections or restrictions to prevent them from doing that. Of course, we all agree that ease of access in elections is fundamentally a good thing. We also agree that security and integrity are also important to ensure that when the results of the election are announced that they adequately and accurately portray and display what the citizens wanted them to be. And in that regard, we should crack down on fraud at any and all cost. We all agree that both of these things are true, but sometimes they conflict with each other. For instance, voting by email. Sounds fun, doesn't it? You don't have to get out of bed, you don't have to find your ID, you don't have to drive down to town hall, you don't have to wait 45 minutes in line waiting to vote for no reason. It sounds tantalizing, doesn't it? All you have to do is send an email a few strokes of the keyboard and one click away and you have cast your ballot. Ease of access has been secured. But the election hasn't been secured, because if you could vote by email, then everyone could vote by email, including people who weren't even American citizens, and including people who didn't even actually exist. So in this case, we would be protecting ease of access at the expense of security. And this brings us to a conundrum that we all face in the American political system. In any election, we must choose between these two values, and we must choose wisely. This brings us to the question I've been given, which asks, is Georgia's new voting law suppressive? And the answer in the strict literal interpretation of the word suppressive is yes. Under Georgia's new voting law, there will be less votes, so it could be said that votes are suppressed. The question is, are the right votes suppressed for the right reason? You see, this Georgia voting law restricts ease of access to the election, but does it do so at a benefit, at a gain in security? And if it does, is that worth it? And ultimately, that's the better question, which is, does this sacrifice too much ease of access and attain too little security to be worth it? But I think ultimately there are certain parts of the bill that don't and certain parts of the bill that do, and we'll analyze that as this speech progresses. But first off, what bill am I talking about here? What is Georgia's new voting law, and why might it be considered suppressive? This brings me to my first point, which is answering and asking that question, what does the law do? CNN reported just today on June 25th, if you're watching the live stream and I've somehow won, then that will be yesterday because you'll be watching it on June 26th, but CNN reported of Governor Brian Kemp of Georgia, and he said, quote, Georgia will take another step toward ensuring our elections are secure, accessible, and fair, end quote. And in doing so, this will be achieved by passing a new law through both chambers of the Georgia legislature, which, as CNN reported June 25th, it did so on the night of June 24th. This bill, called the Election Integrity Act of 2021, does several things. Firstly, it instantiates voter ID requirements for absentee ballots. In order to cast an absentee ballot, you need to provide uh, proof of driver's license, an ID card of some kind, a date of birth, four digits of your social security number, etc. They're basically upping the security for absentee ballots, and to an extent that one makes sense. You're not precluding anyone from voting, you're just discouraging people from voting illicitly. Another thing this bill does is it instantiates a deadline for absentee ballots, meaning you have to submit your absentee ballot at least 25 days before a federal primary or other election. And to an extent, that sounds more suppressive than beneficial, but we'll analyze it in just a second. One last thing this bill does is really interesting. It mandates that if people are waiting in line, that they cannot be fed refreshments. They can't be given food, they can't be given water, and you might be thinking to yourself, why in the world would Georgia be doing that? And we'll answer that question in just a minute. But for now, let's pivot to my second point, which is the political response to all of this, to the increased security, to the increased restriction, to the increased requirement, and to the decreased refreshments. First off, the political response from the left, from the Democratic Party, has been as expected. 
They hate it. In fact, a Democratic senator said it's like a Christmas tree of goodies for voter suppression. Joe Biden has since decried the bill as blatantly un-American and an attack on the Constitution and good conscience. Whereas the Republicans, who in wake of the previous election are clamoring for more voter security, don't think it went far enough. In fact, Donald Trump went on to say, and I quote, that this bill was, quote, not enough, end quote. Now, I want to analyze all of the changes and reforms that this bill is making, starting on the ID requirements for absentee voting. That absolutely makes sense. That's not precluding anyone from voting. It's just a common sense restriction. If you're going to vote without coming to town hall, you have to prove that you are who you say you are. Secondly, on the issue of having to submit absentee ballots at least 25 days before the election, that doesn't really make that much sense. It doesn't improve security that much, but also it's not that much of a discouragement to voting. You can just vote earlier. But I want to focus in on one issue in particular, that of not being able to serve refreshments to voters waiting in line. Well, Attorney General Merrick Garland thinks she has the bill on this regard. She says that the bill was, quote, enacted with the purpose of denying and abridging the right of black Americans to vote, end quote. And you might be thinking, why? Well, NPR reported that black Americans, particularly because they're from urban areas where there are longer lines and longer wait times to vote, spend disproportionately more time waiting in lines to vote. And thus, by discouraging the refreshments, they're actually discouraging voting of black Americans who actually, as reported by that same NPR article, typically vote for the Democratic side. So this seems to be a Republican institution simply repressing and suppressing Democratic votes. And this restriction in particular is heinous. It's merely suppressive. It restricts ease of access selectively and doesn't have any gain in security. But each of the other restrictions, the ID requirements, etc., make enough sense that on the whole, this bill, while perhaps not the best intentioned, does provide enough security to outweigh the minimal loss in ease of access. Thank you.